Last week, we looked at simple harmonic motion, motion that repeats itself. And these kind of vibration is very much related to this other phenomenon we call traveling waves, where you can think about on a string, if you wiggle it up and down, a little bit later, that wiggle moves forward like a wave, or on an ocean, and then even things you can't see, like sound wave, and the things you see with light wave, things like that. They're all kind of governed by the same kind of mathematical equation as the physics turns out. So it becomes all grouped in this phenomenon we call traveling waves. In particular, if you have a wave driven by, say on this end, a simple harmonic motion, if this thing's bob up and down continuously in a sinusoidal fashion, you're going to get a sinusoidal wave that moves in time. Which is why these waves we call harmonic waves, because again it has a frequency and it repeats itself, has this particular mathematical description which depends on both position and time. Now I know it looks a little intimidating, because you may not be very much used to functions that have two variables. So we'll kind of explore it using this particular question here. A couple things to point out. First of all, you see this k here. This k is not the spring constant. What it is is called a wave number, funky name, but effectively, it's actually the spatial frequency. Because what you have over here, this omega, is your time frequency. And in this expression, it's multiplied by time, right? Radians per second times time gives you radians. Spatial frequency is multiplied by x, so it's radians per meter. The name of it is a wave number, but effectively what it's doing is spatial frequency. In fact, there's such a mirror between these space and time thing, they're highly related. I like to summarize things in a little table. So you got something to do with space, something to do with time. We talk about how k is a spatial frequency and omega is your time frequency. Associated with that, you can talk about the time period. How long does it take to repeat itself? And that's what we call the period. But also, you see that in space, the pattern that we're making also repeats itself. So the spatial period, which we call wavelength, because it's like the length of the wave, as it repeats itself, denoted by Greek letter lambda, follows the same kind of pattern as it does in time. If you ever want to relate something between space and time, well, that has to do with the wave speed. That's basically how fast the pattern moves along. How fast does it move along? Well, it moves one wavelength in one period, delta x over delta t. Or some people like to remember it as lambda times frequency, where frequency is defined to be one over the period. How many cycles you get per so much time. So a little bit of vocabulary to start with, which will hit through the entire question. Okay. So basically, we can read off all these different things from our function, as long as it's in standard form. They've changed it up for us a little bit here, so let's put it back in standard form first by multiplying this into the brackets. So right away, we can pick up a bunch of stuff with um, these parallels here. We got the amplitude, whatever is in front of your sine function, whatever you're multiplying your x is your k, this is your omega, so we got more or less three of the things straight off the bat, and everything else relate to those. So we already have the amplitude, done. Wavelength, lambda is 2 pi over k, simple right? So then the wave speed, we have lambda, so we need the period first, 1 over 4 seconds, or 0 0.25 seconds, so then the wave speed, is that. And then the thing to note is we have this negative sign, so that means because of the way the function works, it goes in the positive x direction. When we have a minus, it's in the positive x direction. We'll see that once we start doing all the snapshots. We also have the period, that's 0.25 seconds. And then the frequency is 1 over the period, so 1 over 1 over 4 second is going to be four cycles per second, which we have a special unit called hertz. 
So it looks like a lot of things is going on, but as long as you can keep track of your time and space kind of separately and knowing what all the words refers to, it's really not that bad. So now let's clean up a bit and we can look at sketching some of these things we call snapshots. What snapshot refers to, it's like we're taking a picture of the wave because as time goes on, the wave keeps on moving. So at a particular time, if we take a picture of the wave, how does it look like? So the first snapshot, we want time to be 0 seconds, so we're fixing the time. So my function becomes that. And to properly sketch a graph, we have x and y, both in meters. We first of all need to know, the, based on the amplitude, the maximum and the minimum. And then from here, based on this k, we know, we've worked out before, that the wavelength is 4.5 meters. But where does it begin? Well, we want y to be 0 as a starting point. So then for sine to give you 0, the angle inside is also equal to 0. So in this case, y equals 0 when x is equal to 0. So we know that the graph starts here, and then it will stop at 4.5 meters because it's one whole period away, or one wavelength away. Then the rest is just you draw in a sine curve. And of course, it's not just the one period, so it kind of goes both ways as well. And it continues on forever. So that's one snapshot. When you move into 1 over 16th of a second, again, you have the same amplitude and also the same wavelength. But this time, when you have the start of a period, so to speak, when y equals 0, the thing inside now has a different time in it, so basically your whole waveform gets shifted a little bit and you solve for this comes pi over 2. It basically gets shifted by one quarter of the wavelength and you can work that out to be 1.125 meters which corresponds with that success spot and then the whole thing ends up at four and a half meters beyond that and again you draw in your sine curve. So you see what's happened here is that in that 1 16th of a second, the wave has moved forward by a certain amount. The same pattern kind of holds, but it's moving towards a positive x direction. And how far has it moved? This delta x you can work out by v delta t, which we found out earlier, to give you exactly the offset that we're looking at. So the form of the function is in fact reflecting how you are moving at 18 meters per second over time. So this pattern is shifting sideways. Finishing it off for my 1 8th of a second, which is 2 sixteenths. Again, your lambda is still 4.5 meters. And whatever's inside that sine function has to be equal to 0. So that gets you pi, shifting by pi, shifting by half a period. So you're starting at 2.25 meters, which is right there, because over the next 16th of a second, you again move by 1.125 or a meter, a quarter of a wavelength. And adding 4.5 onto that, making a little box here. You can see again that this wave has once again shifted another 1.125 meters. It might take some time to get used to, but once you get used to it, hopefully you can see all the connection and how it all makes sense.